of you a special good morning to dr pramila kuduvam the principal of uh, pawar public school kandivali uh, let me begin with uh, she has done a doctorate in education that is phd at the university of mumbai dr pramila kudwa has been a teacher at the primary and the secondary level for over 30 years she has also worked as teacher educator at high school teacher trainer currently she is working as a principal of reputed school in mumbai india she has a phd in education from bombay university as i said it earlier and also one of the highest post graduate degree at the university of south america which is known as doctorate in literature she has authored number of books one of her famous book is from chalk to talk i have purchased quite number of copies and i have already given to the coordinators and i am sure after this today's training program the coordinators will take initiative to get the teachers in a small group and start uh, uh, making imbibing all these techniques in today day to day classroom situation besides the book chalk to talk she has also has elective learning spaces dealing with summer learning loss teaching the global citizens this perception of stress a survey of the heads of the primary schools in mumbai is only ragging bullying in mumbai indian school thinking globally acting local these are the several books that she has authored so you can imagine what a multifaceted and versatile personality that we have this morning with us So without wasting much time, over to you, ma'am. Thank you, Father, for the generous introduction. I hope I can do justice to what you've said. Uh, without much ado, shall I share the screen? Are you all ready for an interactive morning, teachers? Yes. Thumbs up. Okay. um normally i would do a ice breaking session now this is online so we'll try and do what the alternative is i have a picture here this is one of my favorite cartoons dennis the menace i don't know why he is called the menace i think he is the cutest character ever now ma'am the picture is not seen not seen ma'am no uh, we are unable to see the screen oh Okay, let me share it again. Thank you for telling me. Can you see it now? No, ma'am. Uh, no. It says no. No, it's a blank screen. What's happening? Is not able. No. Um, is it a presentation? Yes. Uh, Let me open it. Wait. What I had done was I had minimized it and I kept it there. Now, can you see it? No, ma'am. Can you close it and then again share it? Open it again. Open the application again. Share it as a full screen, ma'am. Only then it will come. Share it as a full screen on the PPT. <laughs> No, no, it it should come. This is not the first time I'm doing it, but uh, for some reason it's not working today. Can you see it now, ma'am? You you need to share the screen. I did. Oh, I didn't. Sorry. That's. Can you see it? No, it's just a blank with the mouse no. moving all over. Let me if you can share the PPT you. with me, I'll share it. How do I share the PPT with you now? If you can mail it to me. Oh, it's too large a file. Let me just give it one shot. Wait. Okay. It's not. It it sh shouldn't work like this. I mean, only whiteboard is seen, huh? Yeah, only whiteboard. Yes. Board. 
Just a suggestion, copy that particular file on the desktop yeah. and open it and uh, share it maybe first. Instead, okay. if, if it is in other folder, whatever, first post it on the desktop, okay. open it and then share it. Just try that. Copy first on the desktop and then open it and share it. I'll... Okay. It's not mean, copying. Let me open it and save it. Meantime, Father Shailan also celebrates her birthday today. <laughs> so many happy returns to Shailan. Yes, yes, oh. yes. I forgot. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you so much, Father. Thank you, sir. Thank you, everybody. <laughs> I saved it on my desktop. Let me just see. No, ma'am, it's not visible still. No? Ma'am, is your net very stable? Sorry? Is your net very stable wherever you're sitting? Yes. Can you do it on Google Drive? Mm. Just give a minute. Yeah. Now let me open it here. No. It's just the whiteboard being started. Should I log out and log in? Ma'am, I get the feeling that you're sharing only the whiteboard. Sharing whiteboard. And not sharing yes, the and not the screen. Sorry? I get a feeling that you're sharing the whiteboard on Zoom and not the screen. Share screen. I'm doing the share screen. No, no, in that the whiteboard option yes, is there. The which you're whiteboard, clicking. not the PPT. That's a possibility. Yes. Yes. Got it. Can you see it now? Yes, ma'am. Yes. Very much. <laughs> Small got, it. got it. Okay. Now, this is one of my favorite characters. In the bargain, we lost about five minutes. My favorite character, I don't know why he's called the menace. I think he's one of the cutest little angels on the surface of Earth. Now, he's asking Mr. Wilson, you haven't told me I'm bothering you in a long time, Mr. Wilson. Is everything okay? What is the message that you're getting here? What is the message that you're getting here? That Mr. Wilson keeps on complaining. About Mr. Wilson him. has stopped complaining. Yes, what would be the reason? Maybe he's behaved himself or maybe Mr. Wilson has given up. All right, he's behaving himself. But why is Dennis asking him? He's concerned. He's concerned. That little boy is concerned. That is why he's asking Mr. Wilson. So when do you show concern? When you care about someone. When you care. Do we need to care? Yes. yes. So if there is a child who is locked in the toilet by a few bullies and there is another child who sees it, what should he do? Does Tell someone happen? about it. Does this happen in school scenario? Does it happen in school setups? Bullies locking somebody in the toilet? It's possible, yes. ma'am. Hasn't it's happened. Possible. It's possible. Yes. It may not have happened in your school or mine, but it is possible. There are bullies everywhere. So what do you do? How do you handle that? Inform someone. And inform someone elder like who can help you. 
Okay. You think all children do that? Uh, no, ma'am. They are too scared sometimes. They are too scared. They don't know what to do. Yeah. And that is why we need to do this today. Cognition to emotions. This is nothing but socio-emotional learning. And our children have been away from the school setup for a long time. So there is all the more reason for us to do it now. Before we go ahead, I want you to tell me what do you expect? You can put it in the chat. And uh, let me see if I can see the chat here. You can write it in the chat what you expect from today, today's uh, workshop. Type it in one word, what you expect. There must be some preconceived notion. There are two sessions. This is the first one. Rahul Sharma has written an interactive session, ma'am. Okay. Something new. All right. Something to learn about. Naturally. You come to a workshop to learn, but there must be some expectation. You know the topic. Learning to handle students who have been locked up in their homes. Okay. How to connect better with students. All right. That's good. Dealing with emotions of children. Lovely. Last message and then we move on. Making classrooms more interactive. Okay. The purpose of SEL is not just to make it more interactive. It is to ensure that we are able to handle them right. Can you see a huge elephant balancing on a little, small, little ball? Balance is the key to life. What does this mean to you? Teachers, you need to speak up. I'm sorry, the whole session will go like this. I'll be asking questions and you need to speak up. We need to balance with the different aspects of life. Whatever we are uh, like different. Uh, I'm unable to explain myself like different uh, factors that are there in my Speak life. In terms of a classroom setup. Uh, in classroom balancing with the different learning abilities of the children. Okay. Somebody else? Holistic learning. Learning everything in a balanced way. Okay. okay. Practice makes perfect. Practice makes perfect is fine, but I'm talking about balancing. Why am I talking about balancing? In a classroom setup, maybe you are not exposed to it. Diversity is diversity of students. That makes a difference. Children come from all kind of kinds of upbringing. They come from all kinds of socioeconomic strata. They come from all kinds of intelligence levels. You have to handle all that. For all that, it is necessary that the child is socio-emotionally balanced, and so are you. We can lose it on one day where we've had too much of stress. So balance is the key to life. Now let's go about seeing exactly how we bring about this balance. What is socio-emotional learning? It is the vital framework through which we acquire skills. We'll see as we go by, what are those skills? Understanding and managing the emotions, nurturing positive relationships, making informed choices, and feeling and exhibiting empathy. Just to give you an example, I have uh, a student who is currently in the 12th standard and he, is into programming and artificial intelligence. He came across learning disabled children 
two years ago when he was in the 10th standard in my school. He developed an empathy for them. And currently he is in the process of developing an app for the learning disabled. Through that app, he hopes to achieve, build a gap between what the child knows and the IEP program that the special educator has to develop so that it becomes much faster and the child is able to gain the benefit. So he has been into social emotional learning and he's much ahead of some of us. He's able to empathize, he's able to deal with it. As we go further, you will know exactly where he belongs. There are five components, as you can see here. Self-awareness, self-management, social awareness, relationship skills, and making responsible decisions. We'll take up one by one. Self-awareness. Now, we not only speak, we also speak with our eyes. Sometimes you can get the children to do this kind of an exercise. Let's say for instance, a teacher comes to my office. She wants to talk to me and I'm busy signing some papers. So I tell her, okay, talk. And I keep doing my signature work. How does the teacher feel? Ignored. Yes. Anything else? May feel that you're not really interested. Yes. Rejected. Yes. But if I were to put down the paper or the pen and say, you want to talk? Come on. What will the teacher feel? She feels good about it. She feels good about it. Okay. Anything else? So that the is concerned about. Okay. If you cared. The teacher, the teacher feels that you're willing to listen to him or her. Yes. So the teacher feels uh, uh, she is important for you. Correct. That you're feeling you're being heard. You're being heard. So what is it that one can do to ensure uh, if you are a teacher and a student comes to you, what is it that you need to do? Give him a listening ear. Give and him a listening ear. By giving a listening ear, are you going to allow the rest of you to do something else? Make him feel comfortable. Make them feel comfortable. You have to be approachable. All that, yes. But give 100% attention to what is being said. That is important. That is listening, not hearing. So you have to be conscious of what you're doing. Now, I had a practice. I still have a practice on one particular day in a week, half an hour is open door policy. Anybody can walk into my office and I'm available. There is no need for an appointment. So self-awareness make you realize where you are and then you can plan it. For children to bring in a self-awareness, what you can do is you can have three kinds of exercises where it's a paired activity. One child speaks and the other one listens, looks at the face while the other one is speaking. Second exercise, the child looks at the face of the speaker sometimes. And the third one, the child does not look at the face of the speaker at all. And then you discuss what you felt. And they would be able to tell you what the feelings are. Why do we need to do all this? Let's see, self-management. So they should be in a position to manage themselves, control their emotions, their thoughts, their behaviors. Some of those things, we have done this. Simon says, all of us have done this as children. Red light, green light, all we have played as children. When you say red light, you stop. When you say green light, you move. 
Now you can make it a little more complicated for the children. When you say green light, you can get them to move walking, hopping, crawling. You decide and make it fun. All right, for green light today, everybody is going to do a bear walk. For green light today, everybody is going to do a hopping exercise. So you decide. Children will also have fun. This is applicable in the primary. As you grow older, this doesn't happen. So what you need to do is catch them young. Set up short and long-term goals. Create a vision board. You get them to cut different pictures from the magazines, stick it up. You can arrange some, put some glitter and make it look more attractive and ask them what you want to see yourself as. Somebody may say, I want to be a Miss Universe. Fair enough. If you're going to be Miss Universe and you get, let us say, $1 million, what are you going to do with that? They'll come up with N number of things. So if you have to reach there, what is it that you need to do? So you want to be an astrophysicist. To be an astrophysicist, what is this that you need to do? Help them to build their goals. Are you with me so far? Okay. What is social awareness? One minute. I'm putting a link here, click on the link, click on the link and type in what you think is social awareness. Is it accessible? Yes. I'm not able to see the cloud for a change. I don't know. Are you able to see the cloud? I'm not able to see it. I don't know what cloud you're talking about, ma'am, but I was able to feed in my response. There were two uh, columns there, or two rows there. And I could feed in the response. Anyway, just, just forget it. It's not working. Today is not my day. Let's, 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 let me just share the screen again and uh, let's, let's go ahead. So what is social awareness according to you? 
caring for others yes uh it is the ability to understand people from different backgrounds different okay. strata of life okay uh, empathize with others okay yes you can connect emotionally with the others and with the happenings around all right let's see this its ability to empathize with others ability to take the perspective of those in different situations to you you are an awareness of other diverse individuals and groups your ability to make sure that you are treating others fairly so that boy's example that i gave you what is it that prompted him to do this social awareness he suddenly became aware that there are learning disabled children who are different from what he is now there can be a dilemma this is an example i overheard some girls talking in the bathroom about how my friend's body odor is super strong i didn't want my friend to hear it from these people so i gently told her what i had heard she got super offended ran off and now she is not talking to me i thought i was doing her a favor by telling her the truth adolescents have a lot strong body odor we are aware of that and this is one example that i took from there now what is it that this girl needs to do it's a dilemma to tell her or not to tell her if she has told her this is what happens if she doesn't tell her the friends will continue the other people will continue to bother her friend such dilemmas we always face in life now dilemma is that where you choose one path which is right according to you both may be right you stand in front of a road which is broken into two and you need to take a path both are both lead to the same place you reflect also on the group work when the children work together in a group you give them opportunities to collaborate to reflect on what they did now this girl needs to reflect and write down what she thinks is something that should have she should have done whether it is right whether it is wrong whether she should continue whether she should not continue is what she needs to write reflection is a good way of teaching students metacognition you know what is metacognition don't you do you what is metacognition thinking about thinking the thinking about process thinking. why you did what you did when you did how you did these are all things that come under metacognition so supposing the student has not submitted his journal on time you ask him to write a reflection why he did not do it he may just turn around and say he didn't submit it because the dog ate the journal that's a different issue but you have to get them to understand the metacognition process relationship skills are closely linked to social awareness can you see this this is such a beautiful picture i thought this is the black and white of life beautiful picture i don't think i need any explanation here do unto others as you would have them do unto you that's the golden rule and words are like those arrows which you shoot once you it comes out of the quiver it cannot go back so think before you speak think before you act i told you this is the dilemma there are two roads and you're stuck there you don't know which road to take and you have to take the one which you think 
is right at that point in time. I'll give you a dilemma later. Empathetic listening requires waiting till the person finishes speaking. Don't interrupt, listen. There is no such thing as naughty kids or bad kids. There are kids who are crying out for help. There is a beautiful foreword which I got. I don't know if it is true or not, but I'll share it with you. There was this child who used to come for the piano class. He was always unkempt. And the piano teacher was not happy with him because he would just play. He just couldn't care. He would just want to play the keys because he had to be there in the class. And the teacher was also not very keen because she lost interest. She felt that this boy is not going to learn anyway. What is the sense in spending more time on it? And she started concentrating on the smarter ones. And the time for the annual day came in and the children had to perform. And this boy didn't come on time to the venue. When he came in, he was still dressed as normal, unkempt as usual. And the teacher had to give him his slot. She said, okay, go, because there is no other choice. So she sent him up. And he played so beautifully that day. He played as if his, his Fingers danced on the keyboard. He played beautifully. So the teacher was surprised. Teacher asked him, what is it that made you play like this? I've never seen you play like this. So he said, my mother is deaf mute and she died yesterday. Today she's in heaven and she can hear me. So I played for her. I gave a pause intentionally. I wanted it to sink in. So sometimes we become judgmental about the children. So there are no naughty kids. There are no bad kids. It is just that they have some problem which needs to be tackled. Empowerment is education is not something that we do to kids and we do it with kids. So far, so good. Is everybody with me? Yes, ma'am. All right. Now, this is something you need to play. I want you to do this to understand exactly how it works. I want two volunteers. I will stop the share. After that, you can, you can put up your hands and come out as volunteers. And one person will be explaining how to make a sandwich. And the other person will toggle between two emotions. Like the person will say joy, and the person has to tell you how to make a sandwich in a joyful manner. And the person says anger, and the person has to now talk about making a sandwich in an angry way. Is that clear? I'll stop the share. Can I have two volunteers, please? Too. Okay, ma'am. I'll do. I'll do. I'll do also. All right. So I'll then we'll have, have a spotlight on them. Yeah, I'll make it happily. Do. Yes, ma'am. Yeah, one ma minute. Do. You will. You will make and it happily. Uh, make will make it it with but I want a second person. I want a second person. Yeah, Danzi. Danzi is there, no? Who are the two? I'm, yeah, right. Danziano. Okay. Yeah, your partner. Will... Yes. Who is your partner? Yes. Who is your partner? Um, I have to make any partner, anyone? Oh, you got one. Yeah. All right. Okay. So now, who is going to be the one to make the sandwich? Happily. Yes. I'll make it happily. No, one minute. You will yeah. make it. You will describe the process of making a sandwich. Yes. And he will have to keep telling you happy. And then you will say it happily. Then he says okay. angry. Then you will okay. have to say it angrily. Okay. okay. And you will have to 
then you know you need to say it quick okay all right okay swati okay in in oh. between he has to disturb me okay uh, okay sabse pehle uh, from one to another and when okay. i say stop yeah. you will both stop yes okay uh, okay sabse pehle uh, ek bread piece bread piece lijiye aur uske charon corners kaat okay. lijiye yes loudly loudly, loudly. say loudly na no? yeah happy happy aur us par na achhi tarah se maska lagaiye to ye bahut tasty lagega maine kaha na us par maska maska lagana hai butter lagana hai aapko samajh nahi aa rahi hai ye baat aur sab uske baad aur uske baad aur maine kaha okay ha bachcho to fir aap aisa kijiye kheera kaatiye tomatoes मैंने कहा ना एक बार कि टमाटर धो के रखने हैं अरे भूल गई तो क्या हो गया मैं इंसान हूं ना भूल गई तो क्या हो गया इंसान हूं ना मैं भी बच्चों टमाटर काटने से पहले धो लेना अच्छी right, तरह stop, क्योंकि स्टॉप 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 ऑल राइट यू डिड अ गुड जॉब ऑफ टमाटर काटना नो यू शुड हैव बीन फास्टर नो वॉट इज दर्पज ऑफ दिस एक्सरसाइज कैन यू टेल मी emotions keep on emotions. changing from one to the other yes and if you keep changing these fluctuation emotions teachers as teachers also we need to know how to give the right kind of input one moment the teacher say do this and the next moment teacher says don't do this then the children will also get confused the emotions the child will not be able to balance the emotions so the person saying joy sorrow had to be a little faster to bring out that you want to do it again no all right let's go ahead i have to do or someone else is doing then i have to so continue you want to do it or you don't want to do it no no i have no problem i can uh, okay. speak let's continuously go let's go yeah, ahead so, you got the feel okay. of it ओके डेंजी जोर से बोल ना डेंजी सुना मेरी आवाज इतनी लाउड है कि मैं किसी को सुन नहीं पाती डोंट डू इट नाउ ओके डोंट डू इट नाउ लेट्स गो अहेड ओके नाउ नाउ व्हाट इज इट दैट यू कैन डू फॉर गेटिंग क्रिएटिव रिफ्लेक्शंस विद प्रॉम्प्ट्स क्रिएट अ लिस्ट ऑफ फाइव थिंग्स दैट यू आर ग्रेटफुल फॉर एट द मोमेंट पिक वन पर्सन एंड राइट अ लेटर टू देम एक्सप्रेसिंग ग्रेटिट्यूड फॉर समथिंग दे सेड और डिड एनकरेज किड्स टू टॉक अबाउट व्हाट दे आर पैशनेट अबाउट pretend to be a talk show host interviewing a celebrity these are some of the creative reflections that you can have with prompts with children family bonding with interview activities this is very very essential because today what has happened is every one of us has a smartphone and we are busy looking into the smartphone chatting or texting or just talking to somebody a video call watching a movie there is no family bonding happening so it is very very critical that we build this family bonding time what does happy feel like to you there was one instance the kindergarten child was uh, on and the child was doing something the father came and slapped the child in front of the teacher and thereafter the child cried throughout the online lesson we have called the parent to talk to the parent so how do you show so we have to move from punishment to support as i said and how do you show these feelings in your face your body and your action happy feeling children are very good at this particularly the primary and the pre primary and the critical question is when was the last time you were happy any reflections on this any reflection so far 
I'll also go through a lesson plan using SEL. Any reflections on this so far? No? This is very important. Even for those children who have a solid start in life, nourishing emotional literacy and empathy through school years strengthens social competence and altruistic behaviors. Stop for a moment and think. Think of a teacher, close your eyes and think of your teacher during your school days. Have you all got an image in front of you? What is it that the teacher had which made you what you are today? Yes, anybody? Firm, but still loving. Okay, loving. What else? And firm too. Firm is fine. Otherwise they will dance around. They'll dance on your head, literally. Approachable. Okay. Sorry? Approachable. Approachable. A content knowledge for my subject, which made me like the subject that I teach. Okay. Now. So if you were to keep content knowledge on one side and her caring and loving nature on the other side, which is more important to you? The caring nature, of course. Caring nature. So ability to connect, the ability to care, the ability to collaborate, ability to connect is more important. These things lead to care. And that care is more important than just getting a perfect lesson plan and having one of those delightful classes being effective and efficient. There is a difference. Efficient teacher meets the deadlines. But the effective teacher may not always meet the deadlines, but she's important in the life of a child. And she's not playing to the galleries, mind you. I'm saying she because I happen to be a she. My apologies to all, the, all those who do not belong to the she category. Now, this is important, the quality circle time. Children love circle time. So I have a video here. I would want you to spend five minutes looking at that. If there's any teaching learning approach that's intensely personal and face-to-face, -face, it's Jenny Mosley's Whole School Quality Circle Time Model, or QCT for short. The model offers a humane and holistic approach to fostering well-being among staff and students. But in these COVID times, the need to throw a spotlight on and support children's social and emotional learning and overall well-being has been particularly felt by schools. So TTF had to get creative and demonstrate to teachers how they could conduct QCT in virtual mode. We're going to give each other a nice little non-verbal welcome. I want you all to smile at your co-participants how they could retain the warmth, gentleness and emotional connection while being so apart in physical distance. Over to you, Harit. Yes, Acharya. The thing that made me very upset last week was what's happening in the world right now. With many people suffering and... Uh, yes, Acharya, 2020 has just been a very bad year, I think, for everyone. His name is Moppy. What do you think he is feeling? Ms. Chitta, you've raised your hand. Feeling? Just feeling happy. 
Thank you, Mishita. QCT explicitly develops the five key skills of speaking, listening, looking, thinking, and concentrating. Tanya, yes. Why are you a puppet? Mm-hmm. Banana. Why do you like banana so much? Banana. <laughs> <laughs> In any complete QCT lesson plan, there are five steps. A step for meeting up, a stage for warming up. Baby shark, baby shark, doo doo, doo da, doo doo. Mama Chili shark. bean, frozen bean, jumping bean, doo doo. Mama shark, mama shark, doo doo, doo da, doo doo. The opening up stage. I see a friend, Ridima, wanting to say, "What are you fed up of?" Staying at home, I want to go to school. Cheering up, Simon says, "Run on the spot." Simon says, "Run very fast on the spot." And finally, the calming down stage. Feeling completely at peace with yourself and the world around. You know that nobody can hurt you. Upset you or judge you when you're in this moment of quiet and peace with yourself and with nature. Think about it this way: in this deceptively simple model, teachers use five steps to enable children to use their five skills. to develop five vital social emotional learning competencies and these competencies are self awareness self management relationship management social awareness and decision making these sel competencies learned young and nurtured right through 12 years of schooling will form every young person's bedrock of personal resilience and responsibility empathy and nourishing relationships Now what did you gather from here from the video QCT is doable QCT is doable or no put your thumbs up this is what we do normally with the pre primary If you are with me, put your thumbs up. Let me see the gallery view. Okay. Uh, what are the various? Q C T doesn't matter if it's not in an order. First, self awareness. Meeting. No, I'm not talking of components of S C L. Okay. I'm talking of Q C T. First is meeting. After that, speaking, listening, warming up, meeting, warming up, and then. opening up dialogue yeah the dialogue and then calming down yes finally is calming down so these exercises you need to do with the children and help them to calm down we have a circle time with the primary and the pre primary don't we i have it in my school so you must also be having circle time so you can introduce qct Okay. All right. Now you can make lesson plans with SEL in mind right from the start. I have one example. I've taken uh, a simple topic, which everybody should be able to understand. It's vital to plan with SEL in mind to integrate it explicitly into lessons. Develop your own SEL practice. Start small. build consistency and evaluate outcomes engage in reflections 
role model and encourage circle tasks, increase opportunities for peer discussions. I'm sure we are all doing this all the time. What do the teachers need? Self-compassion, about time. And we have to be kind to ourselves. We have to be mindful of what we do, what we say, and recognition of our common humanity. This is the mandate for the teachers. Now, is it easy to have self-compassion? Remember, there is no one size that fits all. It is possible to teach without getting burnt out. Self-compassion provides the same benefits as high self-esteem without its drawbacks. Now, the last one, compassion provides the same benefits as high self-esteem without its drawbacks. I've got an example here. You're performing in a play and you forgot your lines. What would you feel? List out your emotions. Emotions of a self-compassionate person versus high self-esteem person, do they vary? Knowing that I had a little problem with my padlet, let me just see if I can get the padlet, in which case you can. Okay, let me give you Can you click on that and see if and type the um, you want to see the the question that I asked you, do you know what was the question I asked you? You are performing in a play and you forgot your lines. What would you feel as a self, a person who is kind to oneself or as a self-esteem person? Type it in. Are you with me? Yes. Yeah. I don't see anybody. Click on the, yes. Make a new one if you want. Embarrassed. I like this self-compassionate person. I just had a bad day. These two shall pass. Very good comment. Continue the dialogue.
frightened and worried. Why is that? Can do better next time. Fine. Okay, I'll stop the share here. Did you find any difference between the self-esteem person and the self-compassionate person? Yes, ma'am. What was the difference? This high self-esteem person is slightly, is overly critical slightly. of himself. Overly critical yes. of himself. Whereas yes. the uh, other person is far more compassionate, is willing to overlook it's okay i made a mistake today it's all right next time i'll do better the high esteem person so we need to be aware of ourselves yes go ahead uh, tell me the person with high self-esteem always uh, uh, rates himself according to the reactions of others how others would uh, see this uh, that's important for him how others uh, uh, evaluate it's not himself. necessary how others evaluate may not be so important as how one feels how one perceives i'll i'll give you my own example if i were to be in that position i would lose sleep for one week I would keep thinking about it again and again and again. How did I do it? How did I do it? How could I do it? I would be hard on myself. But a self-compassionate person would say, yes, there is a mistake. I should not have done it. This is how it happened. So next time I have to be careful that I don't do it again. And push comes to shove, go and say, I'm sorry. But a self-esteem person will not do that. So what is it that we need to do as teachers? Try and be a little compassionate to ourselves. So you don't get burnt out. That is necessary. Considering this pandemic, there has been a lot of stress on us. So we have to decide and try and be a little compassionate, not shirk work. That's not what I mean. Be kind to yourself and not be so harsh. Are you with me? Did you get the message? Yes, yes, ma'am. Hello? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma yes, ma yes, ma yes, ma yes, ma <laughs> Now, we're going to have an SEL lesson using a Dandi March. I'll just take you through that. And then maybe time permitting, you can get into breakout rooms and make a lesson, lesson plan. Now, objective of this introduction is to relate to real life situations, to provide varying reasons for people to agitate and protest because Dandi March is a kind of a protest. Now, a few couple of years ago, before this particular government came in, came into power, the BJP government had planned on cutting trees at RA to build a metro depot. And people agitated. Do you remember what the agitation was all about? How they protested? Are you with yes, me? Yeah, do yes. you remember what they did? All of them went into the uh, RA colony and were there, made a human chain of some thousands of people. Okay. So they did something like Satyagraha, right? 
they did what Gandhi taught us, Satyagraha. So what is that one commodity, if it is taken away or made unavailable, unavailable to you, might inspire you to protest? This could be the next question, don't answer. What are the ways in which you would fight for your cause? These are some of the questions you could ask as introduction. The main body of the lesson, to understand the term non-violent resistance or satyagraha, to explain Gandhiji's principles of non-violence and its impact on the Indian freedom movement, to be able to describe Dandi March and the Dharasana salt raid and explain its significance in India and world history. Teacher provides a backgrounder to the students. Now what the teacher has to do is written here in the main body of the lesson. Now these are the pictures. Teachers can, teacher can show the picture and talk about it. How Gandhi led the march and with only about 20 odd people. And then he handed it over to seamlessly it was over by Sarojini Naidu because he was Gandhi was arrested. So a backgrounder can be provided by the teacher, show the clippings. But I have something else here. This was one of the, anyway, just listening. Good morning, children. On this day of Gandhi Jayanti celebrations, I would like to focus on a few defining moments of Gandhiji and India. Dandi March was a non-violent protest against the British monopoly on salt production that was initiated by the Mahatma on March 12th, 1930. He led the historical Dandi March from Savarmati Ashram in Gujarat's Ahmedabad district to the village of Dandi in the state's coastal area. It took him 24 days to reach Dandi. He started the movement with 78 volunteers and was later joined by thousands on the way. The movement played a significant role in civil disobedience movement against the salt laws. He took a handful of salt and said, I break the British law. The march played the most significant role in challenging the Britishers. But there was one person who took it to the rest of the world because whatever was happening in India was not shared with the rest of the world by the British. Webb Miller was the man. Webb Miller visited Darshana and he looked at, he's a journalist, and he looked at the protest and he said, people would come, volunteers would come to get beaten up like animals and they would fall down and there would be another line of people waiting to pick up those who were hurt and take them to the first aid station. And as that was happening, another line of volunteers would come by and get beaten up. This was not known to the public. This was not known to the rest of the world. And Webb Miller sent a telegraph and his matter was not sent. He got a message saying, Miller, the messages you deposited about Darshana have not been telegraphed. Next question, why did Gandhi choose salt for the disobedience movement? Why did British flinch at the attitude of the Satyagrahis? What were the patriotic sentiments? Who took over the movement after Gandhiji was arrested? Why was women in movement an important aspect? Gandhiji was a good spokesperson and an orator. How can you justify this? How did Miller's report influence the world opinion? What was the significant contribution of a peaceful civil disobedience movement? How did Gandhiji use civil disobedience to ask for rights? Closure would be, it was a civil, but it is accepted, sorry. It is accepted the defining movement that led to the freedom of India from the clutches of British. A pinch of salt that shook an empire, does it aptly describe the movement? Justify. Now, I've taken you through the lesson. Any doubts?
because you'll be making lesson plans now. For which age group would this lesson plan be? Yes. Any doubts? No, the doubts age group. To... The yes? age group which we have to use to plan the this lesson plan. So you can. I'm not giving you. I'm giving you a broad, general overview. So when you make a uh, when you have your breakout rooms. It is not possible to have history teachers in one of secondary and geography teachers of secondary in one group. It's going to be difficult. So choose a topic which is general and see how you can build in a lesson bringing in the SEL. Now through the Dandi March, which component of the SEL was highlighted? I expected questions like this that didn't come for. Which aspect of SEL was highlighted through this lesson? Which were the five components? Self-awareness, self, self, self management, social relationship. awareness, relationship skills, and decision making, right? Now, which component was highlighted here? Social awareness. Social awareness and? Set up short-term and long-term goals. Yes, setting up of goals. Decision-making. Decision-making. So you choose some topic which can be of interest. And this is just an exercise for you to understand how to make it. And then you can plan it in your own classes. Is that doable? Yes. Yeah. I picked up a history topic, which is of, which is known to all so that everybody understands. It would be difficult to do this using a maths lesson, but you can do it in any other subject. Okay, now for assessment, sorry. What are some of the non-violent methods that Gandhiji could have used to rebel against the unfair salt laws? Name a few other people who were influenced by the Gandhian principles and use them to get political support and benefit their country. What are some of the potential drawbacks of a non-violent protest? What are some of the leadership lessons that can be learned from Gandhiji's self-salt campaign? Now, I've got a podcast on uh, socio-emotional learning. In case you are interested in listening to it, you may do that. Here is the link. Shall I go ahead? Yes, ma'am. Yeah. Okay. Now, somebody has to help me to get the breakout rooms. Father, can somebody do that for me? Yes, ma'am. You're on mute. Put them into breakout rooms so that they can make some lesson plans. Make a simple framework. I'll give you 15 minutes. Or you want to sit down and do it by yourself? Uh, Ma'am, I've made four breakout rooms. To share it. Sorry? I've made four breakout rooms. you made four breakout rooms. Okay. Four is good enough. How many will be there? 43. That will be three of us leaving us. That will be 40. Okay. Put them into the breakout rooms. I will move from group to group. If you have any queries, you can sort it out with me. Make a simple framework, objective, main body, and closure. And what are the, in the objective, you need to say which are the SEL components that you're going to highlight. 
Yes or no? Ma'am, uh, yes. just uh, sorry, yeah. ma'am, just a query. If these breakout rooms could be uh, based on with the section primary or I don't know that you need to ask your person whether it is possible. Uh, Okay, Ms. Dorpi, I'll do it. you can label it as primary or middle school, oh, group one, Okay, group two, I'll make it as per that. It'll be easier okay. for us to work together then because we'll have... So, three, three breakout rooms you want. Primary, middle and senior. Maybe easier to work. I don't know what the okay. others feel. It's just my suggestion. Uh, yes, Naveen, that will be better. Easier for teachers to work. Okay, sir. Thank you. Thank you, Navi. Thank you, ma'am. You will have 10 minutes in the breakout rooms <coughs> because then you will have to come and share. Navi, some uh, teachers are in the uh, waiting room. Yeah, one, right? Yeah. Give them 10 minutes, huh? In, in the breakout room. Uh, yeah, I've already made one break, uh, four breakout rooms. I let that close. It will just take around 15 seconds more. Okay. Junior, junior teachers, can you just check your room? I can't see any breakout room, Navin. Now, can you check? No. Not there. Please choose one person to speak for the group, huh? because I would want you to share with the rest of the group what your plan. Are we set? Miss Chawla? Yeah. Yes. Apne join nahi kiya. Everybody has been assigned. There are three people who are not. Father, uh, father and Cecilia, it's fine. Uh, Miss Deanne, one minute.
मिस मीना यस सर हेलो यस सर नवीन सर या मिस प्लीज जॉइन द ब्रेकआउट रूम या या आई एम मूविंग इनटू द प्राइमरी आई एम मूविंग इनटू द प्राइमरी ओके ओके मैम father do i move you into any room father you are muted father i said any room okay i'll put in a senior section celia in one of the room yes now this senior is for me yes father okay Miss Dian, Miss Dian, any problem? Miss Angelina, any yeah, problem? Yeah, I know. I I don't know. I came out of the breakout room. Wait, I'm going back. Yeah, yeah please. Miss Dian, Dian, good morning.
there are four groups right three groups ma'am primary middle and the senior okay Ma'am, I suppose all are back. Okay, all right. Now there is one thing which I, I think I did not clarify. The lesson is going to be the same as you would have taught otherwise, and you will integrate the SEL component into that. The lesson is not going to be only based on SEL. If it's a literature lesson, what you need to ask, you will ask, because that literature component cannot be done away with. SEL questions are going to be integrated into that. Is that clear? Yes. Sir. Yes or no? Say yes or no. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma yes, ma yes, ma sorry, sorry. Yes, ma'am. Yes, understand. Who is going to get the ball rolling? Primary, are you ready? Yes, ma'am. I would right. say we are ready, right. but we'll try to, uh, you know, it's incorporate. Okay. There is no, no, I don't think there's any need to worry about because the others are equally good or bad. Okay. Go ahead. So, uh, since we are in the primary, we thought of taking a literature lesson, uh, the story of Heidi, just to give you a little backdrop of the story. Uh, Heidi was a little girl who lost her parents at a very young age, and she was brought up by her aunt. Uh, she lived in the uh, town side, city side, and uh, of course, at a particular age, she, uh, her aunt had to take up a job, and so uh, Heidi had to be left with her grandfather, and the story revolves around Heidi's experience uh, once she started living with her grandfather and how things changed, where her grandfather was always lived by himself, so he was this little old and uh, uh, crabbity old man who enjoyed his time by himself and on his farm with his animals. Uh, so yes, so the objective of our lesson here is to, uh, one, to focus basically on the change in the living style from a country, a city side to a countryside. Uh, then again, to focus on being orphaned, being lonely as a child. Uh, third, adjusting. Now, there are two people who need to adjust. One is grandfather, who, like I said, is a cribbity, crabbity old man who has been living all alone for a long time. And now he has to adjust to Heidi coming there and living with him. So a whole set of adjustments that he has to make. And two was Heidi, again, who has been orphaned, who has been lonely, then who found uh, comfort with her aunt who she lived with. And now she had to adjust again to the change of a new place and living with a new person. So that's what we are focusing on. Our main objective, like we said, would have, uh, uh, again, explaining the term of being orphaned, also in, uh, asking the children a little bit about uh, a time when they've been left alone, the feelings, what did they experience when they left alone, when they were left alone for a short period of time. Then uh, uh, visiting your grandparents, how do you feel when you visit them? Uh, and the way uh, Heidi's grandparent, uh, grandfather felt when she visited him, why is there a difference in both the, the time you visit your grandparents and the time uh, she visits her grandparents? And probably what could uh, Heidi or her grandfather do to make the adjustment process eased out for both of them? Then uh, 
again, uh, like I said, a uh, change in uh, focusing on rural and urban. Okay, where have you, if you visited a place, what is the difference you see now in over here that we are living in a city and when you visited probably some of you who have grandparents who live in, a, you know, in a countryside or if you have a place in a countryside and you visited there, so the difference is there. And of course, we would conclude with, uh, uh, if you were Heidi, uh, how would you react to so many changes that have happened at uh, different points in your life? Then to think about, uh, was it right for Heidi to be sent to a, a, to a new place at such a young age and to live with a new person at, a, at the same time? Then uh, if your grandfather or grandmother uh, came to live with you, how would you uh, make it, uh, you know, uh, ease out the, uh, uh, the change for your grandparents or vice versa? If you had to go to visit them, what would you do? I think, yes, that's what we've listed a few things. Dorothy, I think you did a marvelous job. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Yeah. Now, what I want you to focus on is yes. which of the components of SEL did you touch upon? Self-awareness? Yes, ma'am. So we have self-awareness. Self-management. Self -management. Yes. Oh, we also have relationships. Self-management. Relationships. Relationships. And, and is there and, uh, social awareness where we are talking social about awareness. Out of the five, you touched upon four. That's why the, it Thank was you, well done. It Thank was well done. Once again, you, I'm reiterating here, you will plan the lesson as you normally do, and you will integrate the socio-emotional component into that lesson. I forgot to mention it when I was going through it. The Dandi March was Dandi March. In that, there were emotions put in. Okay? All right, that was very well done. Very, very well done. Next group, please. We just have six minutes. Which is the next group? Yeah, middle school, ma'am. Yeah. Yeah, we have done our chapter in Hindi. Ayodhya Singh Upadhyay, Haryoj Ji ki ek prasidh kavita hai, Pool or Kata. Jisme unhone bataya hai ki kis tarah se फूल और कांटा दोनों एक ही डाली पर पैदा होने पर दोनों एक ही सराउंडिंग में पैदा होने पर फिर भी दोनों के बिहेवियर में किस तरह से चेंज आता है किस तरह से जब आगे बढ़कर वो दोनों कैसे अलग-अलग कैरेक्टरिस्टिक्स -अलग के साथ हमारे सामने आते हैं और हमारा मेन ऑब्जेक्ट इस कविता का है कि हमें समझना है कि किस तरह से हमें परोपकारी होना चाहिए to be generous to others, to be friendly with others, to help each other. भले ही कवि ने इस कविता में कहा है कि कांटा ऐसा है, वैसा है, लेकिन हमारे बच्चों ने ही कुछ एग्जांपल देकर इतनी अच्छी तरह से इस कविता को इस कविता में फूल और कांटे को रिलेट किया है कि हम भले कवि का ये उद्देश्य नहीं था, कवि ये कहना चाहता था कि कांटा बहुत रफ है। जैसे ही हम काटे के पास जाते हैं वो हमारे कपड़ों को काट देता है उसे कोई फर्क नहीं पड़ता उसे कोई परवाह नहीं है आपके सुंदर कपड़ों की वो आपके कपड़ों को फाड़ देता है तितलियां उसके पास फूल के पास आती हैं रस पीने के लिए वो उसके कोमल पंखों को कतर देता है लेकिन वहीं पर फूल जैसे ही तितली उसके पास बैठती है वो उसको अपना रस पीने देता है और जैसे ही हम किसी फूल के पास जाते हैं कितने भी हम उदास हो हम प्रसन्न हो जाते हैं हम खुश हो जाते हैं और इन दोनों के बिहेवियर के कारण फिर कॉन्सिक्वेंसेस क्या है कि कांटा अपने बुरे व्यवहार के कारण कोई भी उसे पसंद नहीं करता जैसे ही आपके हाथ में कोई कांटा झुक जाए आप उसको निकाल के फेंक देते हैं और गालियां देते हैं उसको कि ये क्या है इसने मुझे दुखी कर दिया लेकिन वहीं फूल को हम प्यार करते हैं उसे हम तोड़कर अपने घर ले जाते हैं और अपने घर को सजाते हैं न केवल यह 
बल्कि वह अपने अच्छे गुणों के कारण ईश्वर के शीश पर चढ़ाया जाता है पूजनीय है वंदनीय है तो आ, हम इस बात को एक्सप्लेन करने के लिए हम अब नाउ वी आर कमिंग टू क्लोजर हम बच्चों को आ, कहेंगे कि अपनी नोटबुक में होमवर्क देने के लिए हम कहेंगे कि अच्छा, अच्छा ऐसा करो बेटा दो कॉलम बना लो एक फूल और एक कांटा और उनकी कैरेक्टरिस्टिक्स लिखो उनकी विशेषताएं लिखो फूल की क्या विशेषताएं हैं कांटे की क्या विशेषताएं हैं इस तरह हम उन्हें होमवर्क दे सकते हैं और या हम क्लास में डिबेट भी करवा सकते हैं कि अगर आपको आप इन दोनों में से फूल और कांटे में से क्या बनना चाहेंगे क्यों क्यों अगर आप फूल बनना चाहते हैं तो क्यों और कांटा बनना चाहते हैं तो क्यों कांटा बनना चाहते हैं क्योंकि जैसा कवि ने तो यही कहा है कि कांटा ऐसा है फूल ऐसा है कांटे को कोई पसंद नहीं करता फूल को कोई पसंद नहीं करता लेकिन हाँ जी थोड़ा थोड़ा मुझे यहाँ थोड़ा बोलिए I have a little uh, disconnect. हाँ जी तो अभी सोशियो इमोशनल कॉम्पोनेंट विच वन आर यू इंट्रोड्यूसिंग इसमें हम करेंगे मैम सेल्फ अवेयरनेस ओके कि किस तरह से हमें अपने आप में अच्छे गुणों को अच्छे गुणों का विकास करना चाहिए फूल की तरह सो यू कैन आज द चिल्ड्रेन वॉट आर यू वॉट यू कैन डू इज यू कैन हैव अ कोलेबोरेटिव टेक्निक वेर यू गेट ए चिल्ड्रेन टू Sit together in a group Haan and ji. decide what are the good qualities of the flower Haan. that they would want to. Whether they are a flower or a thorn, yes, If they are a flower. Then Haan. what are the good qualities of the flower? Ha. And if they are a thorn, what are the good qualities of the thorn that will also have some good qualities? Yes, Because yes. There is no naughty child, no bad child. Yeah. Ha. So you can get them to do that, and that would be self awareness. हाँ जी एंड वाई इज इट दैट देर इज अ थॉर्न अलोंग विद द फ्लावर हाँ तो ये बच्चों ने ही अपने आप मैम उसमें आंसर आप दिया कुछ बच्चों ने पूछेंगे हाँ आप जब प्रश्न पूछेंगे तभी तो बच्चे इस इस पर चर्चा कर सकते हैं ना हाँ लेकिन अगर सभी बच्चे पूछना चाहिए यस अगर सभी बच्चे कहें कि नहीं मुझे तो फूल बनना है फूल बनना है तो हम उसको कह सकते हैं आप काटा क्यों नहीं बनना चाहते करेक्ट हम ये भी कह सकते हैं कि अगर सभी बच्चे काटा और फूल एक साथ में क्यों है हाँ ये भी कह सकते हैं यस तो कवि क्या कहना चाहता है हाँ जी कवि इस कविता के माध्यम से हमें क्या संदेश अगर कांटा नहीं, नहीं होता अगर कांटा नहीं होता तो फूल की क्या परिस्थिति क्योंकि कांटा है तो उसके कारण फूल सुरक्षित है ओके अभी एक मिनट बचा है द लास्ट तो मैम या go to the last group because i don't want to overshoot the last group madam going uh, yeah all right we have It divided two minutes to wrap up yes uh, we have divided the task uh, among few of us we have taken each aspect uh, separately uh, of course since we had a mixture of uh, faculty from various departments a little difficult to come to a topic then we Uh, took a topic that was fam that is familiar with all of us. All of us yeah. have done the revolt of eighteen fifty seven, and from yes. the revolt of eighteen fifty fifty seven, we just took out one particular aspect, which is it has various causes for the revolt. There were different causes, so we just took a uh, one particular cause, a uh, cause, uh, maybe two uh, causes combined, socio economic causes which led to the revolt. So that will be the topic. Uh, the topic will be introduced by talking about uh, the situation in Syria and a few other Middle Eastern countries where a uh, rebellion had taken place. So that will be yes. guessed upon inviting reactions from children. And then we will be coming into that topic uh, talking about the revolt of 1857. So that has been done previously. Uh, coming to the current topic, these are the objectives objectives that we need to cover in the lesson so i will just state the objectives first of all the children uh, will be uh, through the lesson will be aware of the socio economic conditions prevailing all right the second will be the children will be 
uh, 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 the students will be led to uh, uh, will be uh, the children will be sensitized okay about the socio economic conditions uh, an awareness also will be created among the children about the socio economic conditions prevailing yeah. then yes, children will also reflect on the current socio economic conditions and uh, children will also initiate or undertake action oriented programs to end injustices at their own levels or in their uh, uh, situations around them so these are the various objectives that we have put down so i'll ask uh, mr sunil to take us through a lesson because shalom supposed to do it i don't think she's here she's uh, lagged out okay it's it's fine i mean i just wanted to understand whether you have got hang of what i talked about for two hours yeah, so I'll request Sunil to talk about what the yeah. social economic condition that will be discussed in the body. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, yeah, after hearing the objective, we will first begin with an introduction in the classroom, where we'll make the students aware of the Arab Spring uprising, especially in Tunisia, in Syria, in Egypt, that happened, and right now an uprising just two weeks back that took place in Tajikistan against yeah. the government and the causes behind it. Okay, and then because the students are already aware in the middle section of the 1857 revolt, based on that background, we will get them to know the socio-economic condition of the people prior to 1857 and what led that to the revolt of 1857. Now, a reflection is not going to be something separate. Now, as we are discussing each and every aspect of socio-economic exploitation, we will also connect it to the present Indian context and context where the students are. Do they feel that certain section of people within India are economically exploited even today? Are they socially exploited? For example, let's say uh, the, the famine. One, one of the causes also was the, the attitude of the British when we had famine up, when you had come in the uh, breakup room, you yourself spoke about it, right? The famine I in know. Bengal. I remember. Yeah. Now, that was a heartless attitude yeah. of the Britishers yeah. towards India. And that was even later on in during the Second World War, they had the same attitude during the famine at that time. Do political leadership mm -hmm. in a free India have the same attitude today, especially when you have COVID situation, they are more obsessed about their political rallies, putting the lives of people at stake. Are they more obsessed about building youth structures when the Very basic good question. Famines? When basic Very requirements of people are not catered to. So we are going to be constantly uh, juggling or like a, like a pendulum moving from the cause that led to a revolt at that time. And are these causes seen even today? And what are people's reaction to it? Are we reacting or are we not reacting? And what happens to a section of the people who react? So they will get examples of other Stan Swami or certain NGOs who have openly criticized and what has happened to them. So, uh, so the, the, the students, because they are the age group of 15, 14, 15, they can actually uh, not look at 1857 topic as a dead topic of the past, but we see the same situations happening today, but a small cluster group actually rising up and the, the, the reflection topic that can be led, you know, as you said, the circle thing where we can make the students sit and discusses what are we doing? Are we mere spectators as we had certain groups during the 1857 revolt? Or are we also a small part of that group that bring wants to bring about a positive change in the system itself? So we can proceed like that. Yeah. What I liked about this is that you are relating it to the present situation, which makes it more meaningful to the students. That is what NEP is talking about. NEP is talking about making it contextualization. That's what it is called. So you're contextualizing it, which is good. Now, which are the socio-emotional components that you are integrating here? So ma'am, the, fir the first thing is most of our students, at least from the socio-economic social background, awareness. Yeah, they are not aware of the exploitation. Exactly. So, so, social awareness. Yeah, social economic awareness and empathy for those people who are suffering okay Empathy. a decision making a will to decide to do something okay so yes. that is also involved in it and that too collectively Correct. not individually collectively as a group yes that was that was good that was good shall we 
further we'll bring it we'll close it here we we'll have yeah, to the break yeah, the half yeah, an hour. Yeah, yeah. yeah it is now 5 minutes past 11 so do we meet at uh, 11:35 yes yes is that okay yes ma'am 11:35 all yes. right then thank you welcome see you in half an hour java <laughs>